Good evening, Bengal Nation, and welcome to tonight's tilt. The Bengals versus the St. Edwards Eagles. Tonight here at Cl at St. Oh, excuse me, at Euclid High School Football Stadium. Tonight's contest is pits the Bengals at two and three versus St. Ed's at four and one, and both teams are ready to rumble tonight. Except tonight, the big uh, news for tonight is the Bengals will be without their starting quarterback, Ronnie Schultz. Taking his place will be the junior, C.J. Yarbrough. Yarbrough, a junior and a fine, fine athlete, will try to lead this Benedictine offense and team to a victory here tonight. I'm joined with my partner, Michael Kenny, And Mike, after last week's um, drubbing by Fitch, the Bengals had a good week of practice and they're ready to roll. Definitely. I think that they've been focused on this game for a long time. The St. Andrews Eagles, you know, they're a really good team. We haven't gotten a chance to face them since I think it was 2010 the last time we faced them. And I think they've been looking forward to this game the entire season. And they definitely practice hard this week with their new quarterback in order to prepare. So we prepare for the kickoff, and there goes the kick. Looks long and out of the end zone, so there'll be no, no run back. It's number 22. Kicked that ball off. That was uh, Noah Rios, 5'11", 185, senior. St. Ed's ranked seventh in the state by Max Prep. And uh, we'll bring along here as soon as we can uh, where they ranked in PD and if the Bengals are start, still in there as well. The offense will take the field led by C.J. Yarborough. Looks like it's going to be an uh, I formation with Merrill and Jackson in the backfield. Under center is Yarbrough, he turns and he hands, fakes the handoff, it's a pass, he's going deep, and he got a man open, and he's got him. And it's a great catch there by number, number 15, Marvin Conkle, the junior speedster. Great call by the offensive coordinator, Joe Prevest to get some life into this Bengals offense and build the conf confidence of Yarborough. I formation once again, Bengals on the, on the line. Holland runs over to the line of scrimmage, oh, excuse me, over the sideline, runs off the field. Jackson's in the backfield, single back, Merrill in motion. Goes by, pick Jackson the ball, gets an opening. He takes a stutter step, gets positive yards down to the 28 yard line of the Eagles. So good job by the Bengals on the first two plays from scrimmage. They look ready to go, don't they, Mike? You know, I love that first call being a fake handoff and ending up being a deep pass to Marv Conkle. I think Marv's very successful when the ball's passed to him deep, and I think that was an incredibly great decision by Prevesk. Yarbrough under center, motion, Merrill, Jackson. Hits it hard up the middle and fights for about three. So we pick up the first down with that run. As the referee recess the ball. Cool night here in Northeast Ohio, about 45 degrees, windy football weather, folks, in October here in Euclid, Ohio. Yarbrough in the pistol, switches Jackson to the right, Merrill in motion to the right. Jackson gets the ball, he hits it up on the left side, not much there, a pickup of about two. So this offensive line came prepared to play. Good job by that unit coming off the football, getting a hat on a hat and these running backs running the daylight. Looks like they're not going to ask Yarbrough to do too much tonight. No, it doesn't seem like it yet. Looks like they're going to Jackson's legs for most of the time so far. There's a lot in motion, a lot left to right. He gets outside. Good block right there by Jackson. Able to pick up some positive yards, about four yards. It's going to leave it third and long. So 
looks like it's going to be a third and about four or five. You know, as you were saying earlier, I like these calls going to the ground first and not forcing Yarbrough to throw the ball too early. I think it works him in the game well, and I think it's going to serve the offense very well. And we're in uh, field goal range for our talented kicker. A lot motions to the left. He looks left. Yarbrough wears wide open and caught right there with number three draped all over him, and that's Chris Gales drives his first catch of the night. Senior is Gales. So this game really means something to him as that was Jalen Castleberry on the coverage. Good ball by Yarbrough. A great ball by Yarbrough. Great way to thread the needle between the Eagles' tough defense. Jackson with the ball, big hole. It closes down quick, though. Good tackle right there by number 21, it looked like. Uh, Deontes Howard, Jr. So Howard with the tackle, a junior. And he closed that down pretty quick because it looked like Jackson had a hold there, Mike. Definitely, and he came pretty quick flying up into the defense, or I'm sorry, into the offensive line all the way from the DB position really quick and making a hard hit on Jackson to force him to stop. Well, you better get him quick because he can, he can get through there pretty fast. Jackson, ball again, t goes off to the left side, swarmed there by a bunch of Eagles. Looks like it's going to be a pickup of about maybe one. So 8.05 left to go in the initial period of the ball game. Score 0-0. Zero, zero. Bengals on the march. They're moving from right to left. As you can see on the screen, Yarbrough's getting the signals from Prevest. So Yarbrough on the pistol. From the pistol, that looks like it's going to be number 22 in the backfield with him. Andre Rogers fakes it to him. Ball caught. No. Had it in his hands, but a good job there by number one, Joel Castleberry. I'm going to guess they're brothers. And uh, unfortunately not able to convert on that third down. He had it in his hands, Mike, but Lott wasn't able to corral the ball. Definitely. And the strength by Castleberry forcing that ball out. Speaking of the Castleberry brothers, their older brother Castleberry only graduated a couple of years ago and went to Michigan, a top prospect in the state. And I would not be surprised to see both of them go to big schools in the upcoming years, both of them being juniors, of course. I'm sorry, Jalen's a senior. Cora, ball's up, it looks like it's good to me, and the referee signals it is good. So the Bengals take the ball down the field in their initial possession, and Yarbrough does an excellent job of passing. The offensive line did a great job of blocking, and the Bengals just couldn't get in the end zone, but we got in the red zone, were able to convert for three points, and we'll take it. So with 7.25 to go in this first period, the Bengals take the lead three to nothing. And I don't know about you, but I love these play calls so far. I think offensive coordinator Joe Prevesk is making some great play calling, and I think that going to CJ's arm was great in some points, but I think that we need to go to the ground just as much as we did last time, because it brought us a lot of success, honestly. Yeah, Mike, I, I agree with you 100% uh, on those comments. And I was so engaged with watching the offense and seeing how uh, Coach Good and Coach Prevest wanted to come out and introduce uh, CJ into this ball game since he's taking the place of Ronnie Schultz, the senior, who's out with a knee injury tonight. Uh, when we get word of how long that will be, we will pass it on to you. Uh, so I didn't get a chance to see this, uh, the St. Ed's defense. Um, I know they're a, a talented one, but Prevest did a great job of calling plays, and and uh, like I said, that unit did a good job of advancing the ball down the field for a score. Definitely. So that gives the Bengals some confidence for this young quarterback and for the team. Now let's see what the defense can do as Ivan Sharan Kicks the ball off deep, and it'll be short. Caught at the seven-yard line. He makes it up. Uh, tried to make a man miss. Gets the ball out of there. It looks like the Bengals might have it. 
but it looks like they're going to call them down. They're down. Yep. The ball did not come out as number one, Joel Castleberry, returned the football and barely got back to the 20-yard line. As a matter of fact, they're going to spot it at the 19. And a great near-force fumble and tackle by Mike Hatcher, number 29. Great play coming down there quick around the wedge of St. Edward and almost forcing the ball out, obviously. Yep. Mike Hatcher, the talented junior, gets all the ball outside. Good tackle right there. Looks like that's going to be number 15, Marvin Conkle, on the tackle. That was definitely a good tackle. You could see the, the runner coming right out to the outside, and Marv squared up with him, buzzed his feet, and went right for the legs, forcing him over. So if the offensive uh, coordinator for the Eagles take a cue from our past opponents, they'll know we're vulnerable to that outside. We really got to shore that up and make sure we, we follow through with our assignments. Christian Ramos is the quarterback. He's in the pistol. Claps his hands once, no ball, gets the ball, hands it off again. They got him bottled up right there. Number six with the carry, I think it is, Malachi Watkins. Good tackle there by the linebacker, Terrell Bettingfield. Oh, Darrell, I'm sorry, Darrell Bettingfield was on the tackle. Quarterback in the pistol turns, gives it up, big hole, and he's going to be a little short of the first down. Pick up of about six. And it's going to be, yeah, third and a long, third and a long one. So here's the biggest play for the defense tonight. As number four, Christian Ramos, talented junior, more of a runner, Michael, than he is a passer. But he's got some talent back there in the backfield with him. Oh, definitely. So there's Ramos. He has the football off short. They're grinding, and it looks like he's going to be short. The referee, the side judges are walking it in. He's going to be about a half yard short, maybe a yard short. So first big decision for Coach Lombardi. For Coach Lombardo for the St. Edwards Eagles, and they're going to keep the offense on the field. So here we go. They got the big guys in there. Womack and Jolly Jr., along with number 77, Gavris. Pistol formation. He's going to keep it. He's going to look somewhere. There's nowhere to, nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Great job by the defense. Gavris with an excellent job shutting down the outside as they knife in and get the tackle. Also on that was Jolly. So great job by the defense here early in the game with 4.52 left in the first quarter. And the Bengals will take over in the Eagles territory. What a great stop by the defense. They were putting a ton of pressure on the run there. And I think that was the exact right play to make, forcing them to run backwards a little bit and try to adjust. But it was just too much from the Bengals defensive line for them. And they get taken down in the backfield, forcing us to get the ball again. That's right, Mike. So Yarbrough's under center. Merrill in the backfield. He fakes it to him. He get a little, got, got a good block. Man is open and it intercepted. He threw it a little short, trying to go deep for, looks like it was number, number 26. That was Jackson coming out of the backfield. And on a wheel route, I believe it was. He had him. He was open, but not enough arm to get it down there. So the Eagles will get the turnover, and they'll get the ball in the shadow of their goal post at the four-yard line. We can't keep this defense out, out on the field like we did last week, Mike, Definitely for a long not. period of time. Definitely not. And even this is too soon. I agree. So Ramos in the pistol. He fakes it, throws it outside. He's got some blockers in front of him, and he's trying to get around the edge. He does, 
And a big game as he's out of bounds at the 31-yard line, still, still in Eagle territory. So Ramos swings it out to his receiver. We get that number. We'll let you know what it was. Number 32 was on the receiving end of that pass. Jackson Miller. So Jackson with a fine catch and run. Ramos in the pistol. Castleberry lined up to his left. Trips on the right. Turns, gives, gives it, keeps, keeps it. Nobody in the middle. Makes the guy miss. And he falls forward, but not before getting the first down. So Ramos working his magic. Defense has got to find that football and make sure they slow this guy down because he, he can be a threat on the ground. So that's first down. Ball on the 44-yard line of the Eagles, 340 and counting in the first quarter. He gives it to the big guy, nothing but green, and he gets taken down right there at the 40, but he dives to about the 42-yard line. As it looks like number 38. Oh, 38-yard line, I'm sorry. It's on the 38-yard line. I think that was Conkle on the tackle. He gives him the ball again right up the middle as number six, Malachi Watkins, is being worked on this drive pretty hard. The Eagles lead this series lifetime, nine and nine, 20 and three. We've been playing against this organization since uh, since the school, since 57. So it's, uh, it's a long rivalry and a good one. Ramos looks, let it develop, sees the opening. There he goes. There he goes. Picked up some first down, and he will bring take the ball down to the 22-yard line. A great open field tackle by Marv Conkle. He's been making these plays all day, and I wouldn't be surprised if he makes a huge presence on the defense as well as the offense today. So Conkle, as my partner mentioned on the tackle, but we don't want to make too many tackles. That means they're getting downfield too far. 234 and counting down in the first quarter. Ramos takes the ball. He keeps it again. They wash him down, wash everybody down inside. And he's in a defensive backfield on the second level before you know it. The St. Ed's Eagles offensive coordinator has found something that he really likes. And he's taking big advantage of it. As Ramos was able to pick up about 15 yards. So they're in the in the red zone, and it is the ball is on the six six and a half yard line, and it'll be six uh, first down and goal from right here. Ramos, Ramos in the in the pistol. Watkins next to him on the left, turns he gives it to Watkins. Watkins goes right. He's got room, and he's brought down right there by Marvin Conkle once again. Marv is everywhere tonight. Absolutely everywhere. It feels like he's flying all over the field. Looks like he's the fastest player on the entire field tonight so far on the offense and defense, making tackles this way and that. So we got second down and six to go. No pickup on that play. Number 75 for the saying there's Eagles switch over to the left. So I imagine they're going left. They do go left. There's a hole. He's in. Number 25 on the carry for the Eagles, Daniel Enovich. Daniel Enovich with the run, six-yard run, pokes it in for the touchdown as the Eagles go up six to three. Number 22 is back out to kick. This extra point, Noah Rios, and that kick is up, and that kick is good. So with 119 left to go in the first quarter, Benedictine Bengals turned the ball over deep in Eagles territory, but they were able to march it downfield, get it in the end zone for a 7-3 to three lead. So folks, 
I want to give a special thanks to all our viewers and guests joining in on this special broadcast. Although we are restricted from, ha from having mass capacity at these contests, the Bennington community wants to thank you for bringing presents from your homes. Our young men are continuing the rich tradition at Benedictine of being developed in mind, body, and spirit as we are in year number 94. To assist these young men and provide the resources they deserve, please consider making a charitable contribution to assist with new academic programs, athletic operations, or most importantly, tuition assistance by visiting www.cbhs.net slash giving. Your gifts matter and will continue to change lives for current students as well as future Bengal. Thank you for your donations and your support in the past, and we appreciate it in the future. Ball is short. Looks like Floyd picks it up. He gets to do Andre Rogers, I'm sure. He gets hit hard right there by the kicker, number 22, it looked like. Noah Rios. He's not afraid of contact, Mike. Definitely not. One of the very few high school kickers that are not afraid of contact, delivering a huge hit on Rodgers. I wonder if he's uh, related to the Rios who graduated here in, in 07. He was also a kicker and a teammate of my uh, son really? at West Virginia. Wow. Where, he, where they played together for four years over at West Virginia. Wow. So Yarbrough, flanked by both running backs. He gives it to Jackson on a cross buck action. Jackson gets it up over the 30 yard line and with a pickup of about five. Uh, excuse me, folks, but that was Rodgers on the carry. So number 22, Andre Rodgers. Gets a fine pickup. Great job there by that offensive line. Yarbrough, again, flank. Looks like it's going to be Jackson in there, along with, with Merrill. Blitz. And, wow, hit hard right there initially by number uh, 98 for the St. Edwards Eagles. That would be Caden Casto, and number three came to clean him up, Jalen Castleberry, as he knifed in from the left side of the offense. So now we have third down, 15 seconds to go in the quarter, Playcock at 20. They don't have to run this play. Seven yards to go. Yarbrough gets the ball, takes it out of the ball, and he picks it up and now he's hammered. And it looks like it's gonna be a face mask, I believe. I saw his hand, but we will see it. I see some frustration on the Eagles side, and it is a face mask. So face mask as we end this first quarter with a score of seven to three as the Eagles has the advantage. And I believe, I believe we have to run another play. Since at the end of the quarter, there'll be an untimed down. As we get a new fresh set of downs Yarbrough leading the Bengals tonight if you just joined us. Ronnie Schultz, sideline with a knee injury from last week's contest versus Austin Town Fitch. So we get the backfield straight. Play clock's at 14, 11. Looks like Jackson's in the backfield. Merrill is flanked, moves him over. Three, two, one. He gets it off right on time. Jackson with the football, looking for an opening. Hit, hit hard and met in the hole there by number, look like number two. Number two, C.J. Hankins. So that's the end of the first quarter, folks, as the Bengals trail the St. Edwards Eagles seven to three. So tonight's game is the last game of the regular season with only six games in this season, Mike. And uh, you got some news about uh, what, what the picture looks like starting off with the playoffs next week? Oh, yeah, for sure. So for week one of the playoffs, the Bengals have a bye week.
But for week two, we will be facing the winner of Madison or Willoughby South. And we're looking past, of course, that week right now towards the winner of whoever Walsh faces <laughs> in that following week. But we plan to make big moves in the playoffs this year, just like last year where we made it to week two after a close win against Brexville in week one. I believe it was 31 to 28. Yeah. 31 yep, to 28 right. against Brexville. A very close game mm -hmm. down to the wire, honestly. So the Bengals will take the field. And my partner explained to you what the playoff picture would look like. Uh, hope you can uh, join us as we hope to be able to telecast, broadcast the games to you right there in your homes. Yarbrough on the pistol. He gets the football he's going to throw. He throws it out, and it's picked up. And I think we're going to get a pick play, a pick call on the Bengals. And I think that's exactly what it's going to be, folks. So uh, 22 with the reception, which is Andre Rogers, Jr. It took him a few times before he was able to corral the ball and bring it in, but Conco, Conco was on that same side and he got caught. He got caught picking the defender. So we'll march the ball back. It likes a 15 yarder. That's a big one. And the Bengals will have to regroup and see if we can be effective on this on this play. So it'll be second and about 25, 22 yards. Yarbrough gets the snap, fakes the, fakes the handoff, rolls to the right, looking right, and he runs out of foot, out of the land, and out at the night at the 22-yard line, and he's gonna he's gonna have a loss there. Young quarterback got to know to just throw the ball out of bounds downfield so he don't use yard lose yardage. Didn't have much to throw to as the play developed. But looks like Prevesk is trying to get him out on the edge and see what he can do with his feet <laughs> as well as his arm. So Yarbrough's under center. Looks like Jackson's in the backfield. I know that's Rodgers. And that's Rodgers. Nice run as he gets up and makes it decent to the 40 yard line as he's brought down there by number 54 for the Eagles, Torrey Williams. So good job by Torrey Williams on that play, but not before Rodgers was able to pick up about 20 yards on the run. And the punter will come out, Christian Cora, to kick the football. We need a good one right here so that we can pin him back in their territory. So 11 minutes to go in the half and counting. As the clock runs, play clock at six. Core gets it off and he gets a good kick. And it'll take a Bengals bounce uh, right at the 20 yard line. So the Eagles will start off in their territory in the 20 yard line with 10.49 to play in the first half. So the seniors playing their last regular season game in this unique season of only six games. Uh, you know, this, this, this virus has been uh, very disruptive for everybody in the world, let alone in the country, and sports did not escape it as well. The quarterback hands the football off. Ramos hands it off to number 25 right there. Uh, Daniel Inovich. Uh, the Bengals, I mean, excuse me, the Eagles didn't pick up anything on that play. And uh, we're looking at second and 10. 10-15 and counting. Get him, 
Almost had him. Looked like that was uh, Jolly and throws the ball out of bounds as he's planted on the sideline right there as he releases it by, by Bettingfield. But the big guy, number 76, was running him down. That's Thomas Jolly Jr., but couldn't quite hold on to him. And we just got to have him back there in the back like that, Mike. We got to oh, do that. Definitely. He, he definitely had him. Just a missed tackle, a good move by number four, Christian Ramos. They got the answer. The folks run up to the back. Oh, he missed him again. And he's still trying. As Ramos throws, and he's got a man open. Wow. We have got to hold on to that guy. The first time we made contact, we got a flag on the play. And hopefully it's against the Eagles. The Bengals are pointing that way. But we'll see what the referees have to say. Oh, yep. Looks we caught a break. And the Eagles will pay the price, nullifying that big play and great effort there by their quarterback, Christian Ramos. So it looks like it's, it was a legal man downfield on the on that call. So we'll repeat third down. They'll march the ball back only five yards, and it'll be third and 15. So here we go. Ramos with the empty backfield. He he keeps the football. He has a hole, and it's shut down real quick right there, very quickly. Good job right there. By betting field, and it looked like it might have been Williams. Oh, Gary Merrill. I'm sorry, Gary Merrill on the tackle. The linebacker so, crew, yeah, just doing an amazing job tonight already. Betting field and Merrill making big differences for the Bengals so far. Big deal for the defense to get off the football as the ball takes the edge, and the edge bounce into Bengal territory. And the ball will be taken over by the Bengals right there at the 42-yard line, at their own 42-yard line. And they'll start left to right. Great field position for the Bengals. A very smart decision not to touch the ball at all. A low, a low punt, but definitely not too short but it gives the Bengals great field position going up against the St. Edward Eagles to hopefully take the lead 10-0 or at least put three more on the board to make the game only a one-point deficit. So Yarbrough comes off the sideline, lead the Bengals offense, puts Merrill in motion, gets the handoff, turns and gives to Jackson. He's got a little crease and he's able to pick up about two and a half, maybe three yards into the Eagles territory. So the Bengals with great field position right here. As Coach Prevest has pushed Jackson back into the pistol. Bengals being effective today with the run for the most part. And they've been moving St. Ed's off the line of scrimmage. Shift to the right, Yarbrough throws, catch, tackle. Good tackle, good catch. And he, we got a man still down, he's getting up slowly. Looks like it might be. That's Angelo Lott. Angelo Lott. Angelo gets up a little slow, and now he goes down to the field. So there'll be a timeout to take a look at Lott, number four. A senior wide receiver, 5'10", 160 pounds, and an excellent tackle there by the defender of the Eagles. So he gets up and he trots off field. We want to wish our fine uh, quarterback, senior Ronnie Schultz, a, a quick and full recovery. And hopefully he'll be able to join us on this drive to the state championship in this 2020 season. Uh, it's been it's been it's been uh, it's been different folks <laughs> it has been different but the Bengals uh, have not had any cases 
Uh, Jared, cause Jared Good and the and his staff has done an excellent job of making sure that things are sanitized and players are safe and not coming to practice sick. Conco goes in motion. He fakes it to him, turns, throws, and right there is looks like one of the Castleberry brothers. Is excuse me, that CJ CJ Hankins on the tackle. So that bring up fourth down as the rollout to the right didn't fool anybody. Pressure put on by the Eagles defense as Yarbrough had to get the ball away for Hankins made the tackle. Fine defense by the Eagles. I don't know about you, but I'm not a huge fan of these rollout passes so far. So far they haven't fooled the Eagles much at all. They've been right on top of it, putting a lot of pressure on Yarborough and making the passes much, much harder to play on. So number one made that, I think, a little bit more adventurous than he had to, but Joe Castleberry was able to pull the ball in, and he landed on the five-yard line, so that's where Ramos and the Eagles offense will take over the football. So the offense was able to pick up. Did we pick up a first down on that drive, Mike? I think we might have. I'm, we started definitely past where we were supposed to off the off the kick, but I'm not sure how that happened. I think we got one to do a, do a penalty. Oh, okay. So Ramos gets the snap, hands it off, and the running back is bottled up right there. It looks like it's going to be number six, I believe. Watkins. As number 10 comes in for the big guy, Womack. And Bettingfield will come off the field as well. So Tex Cooper is in the game for the Bengals. And Williams goes in for the big fella. Second down and nine. 626 left to go in the half. Bengals down by four, seven to three. Ball off to the right side, off tackle. Bengals, they're stout. Good tackle right there. Looks like by Gales and Merrill. So good tackle by those gentlemen. And an excellent job bringing up third down. We got to watch that quarterback, Mike. Definitely. It looks like the Bengals' rush defense is putting a lot of pressure on the Eagles right now. I hope we don't see a pass right over the head because it looks like they're preparing a lot for the run. So we stay disciplined. Hopefully we'll stay disciplined on this and bring them down, get them off the field. Looks like some confusion by the Eagles, and they will take their first time out of the ball game. So with 5.43 left to go in the game, the Bengals are down 7-3 to three as the – both teams will talk about a plan here. Eagles trying to convert on third down, Benedictine. Bengals want to hold them to this side of the field and hopefully force a punt. Last week was a, was a, was a good battle, but the Bengals just couldn't, the offense just couldn't stay on the field as they only had they had 124 rushing yards, but we only had 97 passing yards to Fitch's 265 yards. Oh my gosh! So that's a that's a big difference, and that, I believe that is what did it and pushed uh, Fitch to the win. Ramos, he gets it, gives it off. Running back is trying to get there, but he is short. Look like number six, Watkins, on the carry. And they'll definitely punt it away down here. So fourth down, 523 and counting. It'd be great if we could get the ball right here, Mike, and get a score. Definitely great running defense from the Bengals to prevent them from making even one first down. I hope to see a touchdown from the Bengals to take the lead here. Looks like Hatcher was trying to get over to pick his man up, and it's going to be a procedure against St. Ed. So that will take them back five, and they still will kick the football. So 
So we'll see if we can get some pressure on this kick. Nope, looks like they're setting up for a return. One man almost got there. Good fair catch. And they didn't get interference at all. The ball should be at the 42. Yep, I think they marked it right. It'll be stay in Eagles territory, folks. And that will be at the 42, 43 yard line of the Eagles. Excuse me, 38. Trying to read these lines, okay. Uh -huh. Get a little confused sometimes. 38 yard line of the Eagles. So excellent, excellent field position that the Bengals must take advantage of. We need seven. Definitely. We need to take this lead now and prevent St. Edward from taking a bigger lead on their next drive. Five minutes to go in the second quarter. Yarbrough back to pass on first down. Nice pass. Good back shoulder throw to Conkle. They look good on that, Mike. They look like they was on the same page. Definitely. It looked like that was a quick, ready for fire ball right to Marv. It looked like as soon as he turned, the ball was right in his hands. It looked really clean. So good job by Yarbrough delivering the football on time, feet set, and the Bengals are on the march. First down, Yarbrough on the center. Merrill in motion, Jackson gets the ball, bounces outside, stopped his feet, and was taking a pickup of about three. 442, 41 and counting. That brings up a second down and eight. So they give him only two. Jackson goes to the sideline, Yarbrough in the pistol. And there is a flag on the play and it looks like it's gonna be offsides against the Eagles. Great discipline from the Bengals early on. Not many penalties coming from the St. Edward Eagles. Not something you see often, but definitely something you want to take advantage of. Well, I tell you what, that's a fine job by the quarterback to get him to jump with that hard count. So Yarbrough acting like a wily veteran, a wily veteran already. So again, you saw a flinch there on the on the line, but no flag. Looks like. That's Floyd Rogers, excuse me, at the back shoulder throw again. Not able to come up with it is Gales, I believe. The intended receiver. That'll bring up a third down and about three. So Bingo's got to get this first down. We're definitely in field goal range, but as Mike says, we need a touchdown. Yarbrough on the center. There's the ball, Rogers with the football and he slammed down hard by number 53, it looked like in 56. Good job there by uh, Michael Evans and 56, Dwight Harvey. So the Bengals will try out the field goal unit, I believe. And they will try a 34 yard field goal. So 3.30 and ticking in the first half. We'll go with a 34 yard field goal attempt as Sharan lines up. There's the snap, the kick, and it's blocked. Oh my, and there's an eagle right there and he's all by himself. And he's brought down as he crosses over in the Bengal territory. It looked like that guy came from the left side, Mike, of the, deep, of the offense. Oh my gosh, I don't even know. That went so quick. I didn't see that coming at all. It looked like Merrill was able to track him down and, and, and make the tackle before he could get to the end zone. So. Ramos and the offense of the Eagles will be back out on the field with trips to the left, single back, lined up next to him. Defense needs a big play. He keeps the ball and he got wide open up the field almost to the first down mark. Pick up of about nine. Nope, it is a first down. They're in the hurry up offense. 
Defense got to get on the line. Get ready to play. Line up. Ramos tosses it out. He's by himself, and he makes a male miss. Gets Gales miss. Makes Hatcher miss. And that just can't happen. That just can't happen. Not at this point in the game. Not at any point in the game, really. But right here, right now, they're lining it up quick. They're in a the hurry-up offense. Bengals have got to get lined up. And looks like the Bengals was kind of just loafing around instead of trying to get set up quickly to try to defend the ball. Simply not prepared. Just too many missed tackles, especially from that last one. Chris Gales right to the outside. An open field tackle just missed. Number 32, the St. Edward Eagles, Jackson Miller. The defense needs to get prepared better. I think the second level needs to make its way to the outside much faster than they are. They're letting that outside run go right past them, and this is not the first game that this has been the case. So the Bengals with some breakdowns on the defensive side of the football as, as the Eagles are marching down field with 2.45 to go after Sharan had attempted a 35-yard field goal, 34-yard field goal, and got blocked. We don't have the player who blocked it, but great fine effort by, by him and that, that special teams unit to get the ball back into the offense's hands, and now they threaten to score. Ball given right to 25. is wide open, big hole. Another broken tackle. And trying to hold on to him is, looks like, Conkle, as I believe that was Hatcher who came up and he just ran right through him. He just ran right through him as number 25. Daniel Inanovich was able to pick up enough for a first down and now it's first and goal. So Ramos in the pistol, he hands the ball, he keeps it. Ball's on the ground, fumble, we got it, we got it, we got it. <coughs> Bengals have the football and a big, big play right there, just what the doctor ordered. As Merrill falls on the football and the Bengals will take over on their own 12 yard line. Just what we needed, Mike. Definitely exactly what we needed. A huge defensive stop right there and a turnover. Exactly what the defense needed to do in that situation. All I've seen is good from the defense today. Yeah, we get rid of the broken tackles. We'll be all right, huh? Exactly. Only a few broken tackles to the outside run. But other than that, it's been pretty tough for the Eagles to make anything on the Bengals today. So 217 left to go in the half. Yarbrough quarterback. A lot in motion, fakes it to him, throws the ball out, and looks like Conco stopped running. Yarbrough threw to the void in the defense, and Yarbrough, I mean, excuse me, Conco stopped running. I think he saw footsteps, Mike. He definitely saw footsteps. That was, I can't lie, that was a poorly placed ball very much ahead of him. And there was a defensive back right there who I honestly thought was going to make that play. So second down and 10. Play clock is at 20 and counting. 2.13 left to go in the half. Yarbrough gets the, gets the ball out of the pistol. He looks. He rolls left. He looks. And he just can't give it. He's got to throw the football out of bounds and not use yards or make the decision to just run with it. Definitely. But he's a young quarterback, and they are going to – they're going to go through these growing pains. So St. Ed's calls a timeout. They're going to try to preserve some clock so they can get the ball back and try to score. Because they got to believe they're going to get in a pretty good field position with the Bengals deep into their own territory. So Yarbrough showing some youth, Mike, and not getting rid of the football when he's being chased on those on those rollouts so that we can get the ball at the original line of scrimmage instead of running out of bounds and making it tougher for our offense. I agree. He's holding the ball a long time, but that's very common for these new quarterbacks to hold on to the ball a little too long. He's just got to learn to throw it out of bounds when he's got nothing open and just play the next play. 
and not worry about it. So both teams are back out on the field. Benedict and Bengals looking at a third and eight. It looks like it's going to be Rodgers in the backfield. Merrill is flanked to the right. Lot in motion as he goes to the right, left to right. And we throws another slip screen. Conco gets it, gets a field, and he breaks about two or three tackles. Great play goal by Coach Prevest. Great execution by the Bengals. And we got a man down. Oh, it looks no. like it looks like a cramp. And it looks like Conkle. That is Marv, a huge playmaker for the Bengals. And hopefully he's all right. So 149 to go in the half. Looks like Conkle is down with a cramp. At least we hope that's all it is. Oh. That's a guy we cannot afford to lose for any amount of time. But a good job by Yarborough delivering that ball, Mike. Definitely a great pass, a great block coming from left to right by number four Angelo Lott to open up that uh, to open up that field for fi for number fifteen Marvin Conkle and a huge run for him, breaking I'd say four to five tackles before even going down. And it, we're glad to see him get up and jog off the field here. It looks like it's probably a cramp. Yeah, he lost his shoe too. It looked like, or he maybe he ripped it off. Cause that's where the cramp was at. But he's got to hurry up and get that shoe on so he can get back out there. So Yarbrough at the helm tonight for the Bengals. Again, Ronnie Schultz sideline with a knee injury. Looks like Jackson, or no, that is 22. Rogers in the backfield, fakes it to him. Yarbrough. Drops, screen, he gets out. Rogers gets hit out of bounds as he's brought down by number two, and that will be Hankins. So C.J. Hankins on the on the tackle, and he has flashed brilliantly here in this first half on defense with some big hits on the Bengals and a fine defensive effort, but not before 22. Rogers can pick up a first down. Yarbrough in the pistol, switches Rodgers off to the right. Straight drop back, throws it to Rodgers, tip. Ball is tipped, so it falls incomplete. And it looks like head court, uh, offensive coordinator Prevesk has found something he likes with that screen route to Rodgers. It looks like CJ's able to hook it up pretty nicely, and it's giving him a lot of clean looks for at least five-plus yards on every try. Yeah, I agree. It's that middle is open and they could try and take advantage of it. So 122 left to go as the clock stops on that incomplete pass. Second down and 10. Yarbrough barks out the, the call in the pistol, gets the ball. He's looking to pass. 14 is open and he's got a lot. Oh! And Lot is hit hard and he's down. So now he sits up. So they're going to call the incomplete pass or a catch. I don't think he had it that long. Should be incomplete. But no, they're going to say he took steps. They're going to say he took a couple steps as he was smacked hard there. I didn't get the number of that truck, but that was a, a good hit. So the Bengal fans don't like that call as they feel, they feel like he did not have possession. Oh, they changed their so mind. They, call they changed their mind. So now they've changed their mind as they conference a little more and it says it's an incomplete pass. He never had possession. Jeez. These so refs. the Bengals will look like we're going to set the set the yard markers up once again. It'll be third and ten for the Bengals. So good job by Yarbrough on that play, spotting the receiver and putting the ball right on him. Lots just got to hold on to it. Definitely. That's not the first time he's lost the ball off a near catch today, getting poked out by Castleberry early by the end zone. 
Yarbrough barks out the signals. And we got another whistle. And looks like the chains need to be set. As Mr. St. John and his crew are steadfast and consistent on being here at the games, doing a fine job with the chains. So it'll be third down and 10, Yarbrough in the, in the pistol, Rogers behind him. He's got twins to the left and twins to the right. Drops back, pass, throws it to Rogers. And he's hit hard right there by number 23, Parker Croston. Parker Croston with a fine hit right there on Andre Rogers. Mike, it looks like he's just looking at his re He's eyeballing him, and that's, the, that's where the defense is going to go. Definitely. He's hit that screen route pretty much every single pass he's made for the last probably 10 passes. And this defense is not fooled at all almost triple covering him, but it doesn't matter for Yarbrough. He slings it right to him for him to get smacked, and the ball hits the floor. Well, we got to protect right here because we can't afford a, a punt. He's got to get it off a little quicker as well. Ball's kicked. Picked up right there by Castleberry. And good tackle right there as he holds on to it. Looked like it's Marvin Conkle on the tackle. Castleberry with the catch. Nope, that looked like 29 Hatcher. So Hatcher on the on the tackle, fine quarter cornerback in his, I believe he's a three-year letterman. And he's a junior. So he's a two-year letterman. So Raheem Ose gets the ball, gives us the number six. He turns it upfield and he's pounded right there and brought down. Looks like it's going to be Betty Field as he's getting up a little slow. Gary Merrill was there as well. Second down and it'll be about three. So as Joe Castleberry was on that carry, Ramos back in the sh shotgun, turns, he throws out to the right. Man, too low, incomplete. So Ramos had a man out there, but he bought, threw the ball, threw the ball too low, not able to, not able to come up with it. Was the receiver? Gales was on the coverage. Twenty-four seconds to go in the half. Bengals trail seven to three. We've got a little confusion, so the Bengals will take a timeout. <clears throat> so the defensive coaches, along with head coach Jerry Good, will come out and address them and get things straight so we don't give up any big plays at the end of the first half. Football season in Northeast Ohio means it's also emissions time. If you want to be a man of Benedictine or you know someone who belongs at the home of champions, register today or take your private tour. Our next open house is October 7th. Learn more or save your spot at cbhs.edu slash admissions. That's cbhs.edu forward slash admissions. The Bengals come out of the timeout with a plan to slow this Eagles offense down with 24 seconds left to go in the half. It looks like Conkle is very deep for the Bengals. Oh, Ramos hands the football off and a big opener right up the middle. That gave up too much, too much, too much. Gary Merrill on the tackle as number 32 was on the carry. And that's Jackson Miller. So Jackson Miller with a fine carry. 19 seconds left to go in the half. And the uh, Eagles will have a fresh, a fresh set of downs. So a first half that the Bengals should feel fortunate just to be down by four with a block punt, interception, and 
poor tackling, we uh we we get those things corrected, and we could be up top. Definitely, it's only the little mistakes that the Bengals are making early on. Again, that missed field goal, Sharan didn't really even have a chance to get it off before the Eagles defense closed in on him. That would have made it only one point game. However, the Bengals definitely need the ball back, which they won't get at halftime. Ramos takes the ball, straight drop back. He's going deep. And there's and, and, and I cannot believe that number four was holding him the whole time down the field instead of defending him. <laughs> and lot is called for a blatant hold. I mean, he was holding for 15, 20 yards down the field, Mike. An absolutely, completely obvious hold. I don't know who he thought he was fooling, but he didn't see that the call was necessary. And even though he held on to the receiver, the receiver got off of him and made the catch. And still caught the football. So Ramos lines him up. They're knocking on red zone territory. Bengals need to stop. He clocks the ball. Looks like they're going to try a field goal, and they do. They tried him out, their field goal kicker. Rios with eight seconds left to go to try to go up by three, another three points. So here's player hustling out on the field for the Eagles. 30 seconds on the play clock. Nowhere near with plenty of time. So about a 23 yard field goal, ball is up, almost blocked, and he drills it. He drills it right through the uprights. So the Eagles have the last possession, excuse me, not the last possession, but on their last possession of the half, puts it through the uprights to increase the lead by three as the Eagles lead 10 to seven. And Mike, I'm glad that we didn't give up a touchdown, but it's frustrating just giving up those three points. Oh, definitely, and we only have three on the board so far, so now we need seven points to come back in this game to even tie. And we don't even get the ball after halftime. The St. Edward Eagles return, so the, Bang the Bengals have a, a lot of adjustments to make going into next half, and hopefully they can do so so we can take this lead and make this a better game. So with a young, <clears throat> excuse me, with a young quarterback, starting in his first game of this 2020 season, uh, I would have to say he's not doing too bad. No. But just making those mistakes that a young quarterbacks make, hold on to the football instead of getting rid of it, eyeing down receivers. He gets those two things ironed out here at the halftime and trust his teammates. I believe uh, we can definitely come back on this team and, and get a W. I agree. Rios, kickoff, puts it on the ground. Good job right there by the Bengals. Big improvement from last week. <laughs> so let's see, we, as we look at him, so it looked like it's number 18. Yep, number 18 on there. Who is that, Mike? Ken Mari Hayes, the sophomore. Talented sophomore. Played a lot on the freshman team last year. It looks like they're trying to incorporate him as much as they can into their offense, be it only kick return so far. So that's a good sign. We got fine younger Bengals coming along in the system that bodes for a bright future for Bengal Nation. Six seconds to go on the play clock, four seconds left to go in the half. Yarborough rolling to his right, heaves the up. And he throws it up way high, and good defense there by Marvin Conkle as he knocks the ball away from the defender, and he's got another, looks like he's got another cramp. So Marvin's got to get hydrated, get that, get that cramp massaged out so he, can, so he can get some rest during this half. So, folks, I hope you enjoyed that first half. The Bengals are down at this time, 10 to 3. But looks like we have some promise for the second half. Time to go get up, take a stretch, get a cold drink, use the facilities, 
And we'll be right back. Michael Kenny and I, John Good, with the call for the second half.
Welcome back, Bingo Nation. It is chilly frost. I believe it's the first frost of the season for us here at Euclid High School Football Stadium where the Bengals are trailing. They're staying there with the Eagles 10 to 3. CJ Yarbrough, the starting quarterback, junior, uh, for the injured Ronnie Schultz, who's out with a knee injury. And he's doing a he's doing a fine job making those mistakes that a young quarterback make makes, but We've got some numbers for you from the first half that my partner, Michael Kenny will tell you right now. So the leading rusher for the Bengals from the first half is by far Dwayne Jackson, seven carries and 23 yards. The leading passer, obviously, for the Bengals is C.J. Yarborough. 13 attempts, six completions, which is great, 46% completion rate for him for 75 yards, which totals up to 5.7 yards per attempt. And he also has two rushes for two yards tonight as well. And his, oh, go ahead. his primary receiver tonight has been Marvin Conkle, who has three catches for 75 yards, each one of those catches going for first down. And Lott has been catching as well tonight for the Bengals with two catches for 23. Gales has one for nine. So does Rogers, one for nine. So as Mike rattles off those stats, we'll get to the defensive stats here in a minute. As the ball is kicked off by Sharan to the Eagles, they'll take it out of the end zone and start on the 20-yard line going from right to left. Ramos in the backfield, rolls out to his left. He's got an opening to run, but he throws the football. Ball is behind the intended receiver. Look like number 32 right there. Nope, excuse me. Jackson T. Miller was on that attempted pass, but thank you for dropping the ball. <laughs> Bengals got to get a three and out. Definitely. We're in dire need of a touchdown right now. So beginning here of the third quarter, 11.54, only six seconds off the clock on that play. And running back number six finds a hole to the right. And Watkins, again, number 11 on the tackle, Gary Merrill. And Merrill adds another tackle to his first half, having two and a half tackles for himself, now having three and a half. Conkle leads the Bengals with five and a half tackles, betting field with two. Holland has one himself, and Cooper has a half a tackle. So it's third down and five, big down for the Bengals defense. Got to watch Ramos, the quarterback, in situations like this. He gets the ball, he drops it, ball's on the ground, and that is a true blessing for the Bengals. So thank you for everybody who was out there praying during halftime. They put the ball on the ground. We didn't get it, but they didn't advance any yards, and the Bengals will get the football. So with 10.56 to go in the third quarter, Edge will punt. Coming up, and a five catch, and no, he dropped it, and it went right into the hands of the coverage team. And then are uh, they gonna say that Barrett did not catch the football and Castle Bear is right there to pick it up. So defense looks like uh, similar, similar memories from last week, Mike, where the defense spent the whole second half on the field. Definitely some bad flashbacks from last week. Ramos in the pistol. They're set. He hands the football off up the middle, and good tackle right there. As Watkins on the carry, and that's uh, Gary Merrill. Huge hit from Gary Merrill, making a lot of big plays and adding yet another tackle to his two and a half in the first half. Now he has four and a half himself. Pickup of about three. It'll be second down and eight, so pickup of two. Ramos. Barks it out, fakes it to Watkins, and it's wide open on the left side. Stiff arms, one man, ran out of bounds by number 22, Rodgers, but not before he's able to pick up the first down. And it's this outside run, which yet again has been killing the Bengals. I need to see that defensive line play some contain because it seems like every time 
quarterback, Ramos, keeps that ball. He is a wide open field. The defensive ends have got to play with their outside arms free so they can peel off and get, it, get, the, run, get the quarterback. Right there up the middle, Watkins on the carry. Excuse me, that's uh, Inovich on the carry that time. So a big pickup right there, make, make it second down and four. But they were able to pick up six yards. That's way too much. The Bengals defense has got to dig deep to either get a big play or get off on the next two downs. Right here, he has the football off again, cut way back to the right side. And wow. Just not a good job by the defensive line right there, keeping contained on that running play. So once again, that's Daniel Enovich with the carry. And a fine carry it was. First down. Deep in the Bengals territory, he fakes it, he's on chase. Look like Gavris is chasing him, and he'll run it out of bounds, and he'll lose maybe a yard or two. So Ramos with nowhere to go on that play, big number 77, Gavris, was on the hunt to put a big hit on, to put a big hit on him. But Ramos did the right thing and scrambled away from the big fella, get out of bounds. And now that's a loss of about three yards, two yards. So second down and 10. Fake, rolls to the left, and he fakes the man out. Man wide open in the end zone. Scramble drill, folks. That was just a scramble drill. Good job by Ramos making a man miss and putting the ball on the money again to number 32, Jackson Miller. So Jackson Miller, 5'11", 175 running back, uh, a junior with a fine catch, doing a good job of giving his quarterback a target to throw to in the end zone. And the Eagles score early in the second half with their initial possession. So the kick is up and the kick is good. Benedictus. Deficit has increased by two touchdowns, Mike, and we're down now 17 to three. Down 17 to three with only 9.04 left to go in the third quarter. These Bengals have a lot of adjustments they need to make on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. All we need to do is make plays. Definitely. Play football, just Definitely. tackle, catch, hold on to the ball. And it seems like we've come close every single time on offense, but we just come up short with misplays or turnovers or the like. The defense is playing a great game for the time that they spent out there on the football field. The offense has got to t take advantage of the opportunities of field position and down in distance. Young quarterback starting tonight and C.J. Yarbrough, who's doing a fine job of leading this offense, just needs to pick it up a little bit more. So we're going to ask the seniors which I'm sure the coaching staff did, to play a little bit better so we can have that effort to get away tonight with a W. So Rios lines up the kick. Oh, nope, not, not Rios on this one. This is 34. So this is Mr. Kodiaki kicking off deep in, in, deep on, in the Bengal territory. Conkle got an opening and he brings it out to about the 25 yard line. So about a 20 yard advancement of the ball as the Bengals will take over there with the young quarterback, CJ Yarborough, and Conkle comes off limping. I believe he's got a cramp that he just can't shake tonight. And that was a great move by Conkle right there, adding an extra, I'd say at least 10 yards onto that play. Made the move at about the 15, made a few players miss and charged through to about the 25 on that return, called 26. They need to keep a trainer right by him to massage those legs, get that cramp out of there so he can be ready to go on offense. So 
So Yarbrough flanked both sides by Merrill and Jackson. Puts Jackson in motion to the right. Gets the snap, rolls to the right. And he doesn't see anybody. Goes back to the left. And he's got an open field. He's getting a block from his receiver. And he's able to get out of bounds after a pickup of about seven. So a, a, a lot of excitement on that play. C.J. Yarbrough using his legs to make a play. And it'll be second down and about four. Yarbrough was moving on that one, going from right to left, crossing the entire field both ways, making a lot of players miss, making something out of just about nothing right there and getting a lot of positive yards for the Did Bengals. Did you see anybody open, Mike? I didn't see much of anything open. I think he made the exact right decision on that one. So Yarbrough with Jackson behind him, gives it Jackson up the middle to the left side a little bit, close to a first down, and I think he's got it. Referee stops the clock, takes a look at it, and it advances the sticks. So the Bengals pick up their first first down in the first possession of the second half. 8.37 left to go in the third quarter. Yarbrough getting the signals from the sideline, backs up into a true shotgun position. Flanked by Merrill and Jackson. He gets the ball, and there's flags. It's a legal procedure against the Bengals. So it'll be first and 15. That'll push the Bengals back five yards. And we, we definitely don't. Definitely not. These are mistakes that we can easily avoid with the correct form of discipline. But honestly, in these past two to three weeks, the Bengals just haven't been able to shake these. So it looks like, looks like Rodgers and Merrill this time. Blitz on the outside. They're coming for him, and they almost had him. He's able to get the ball away, but it was a, it was a bounce pass, I believe, at number 98, slammed. Number one, number one, I'm sorry, slammed the intended receiver to the ground. Looked like it might have been Rodgers. So Joel Casaberry is the offender on that play. 8.06 to go in the third quarter. Bengals with their first possession of the second half. As the St. Ed Eagles got their first possession, went, got a first down, but then went three and out. And then on the punt, uh, Barrett attempting to catch the football, let it squirt through his arms. Well, Castleberry was standing right there to fall on it for the Eagles. So the Bengals again with their initial possession, Yarbrough under center. He turns and looks at the coach to get the signal. I believe that's Rodgers in the backfield. He turns, looks like there's a little mix up. He throws the football and thrown just a little too late. Good job by number 26 on that play, and that is Carlton Langingham the second. So Mr. Langingham doing a fine job of getting his arm in there to knock the ball away from a tender receiver who was number 81 on that play, Terrell Greer. So now, Terrell had him. Terrell, yeah, he was gone, wasn't he, definitely Mike? Definitely, he was. That was the classic play that Ronnie Schultz usually passes to Marv Conkle for sure. But without Marv Conkle in there, obviously a little disoriented with Terrell Greer. However, a great play by him to try and get that ball. So Conkle fighting the uh, cramps, not on the field at the time. And it looks like it's gonna be a timeout for the Bengals as the coach was looking at the play clock. They wanna take another five yard penalty and able to bring the Bengals offense to the sideline so they all can get on the same page. So the Bengals losing the second half now seven to nothing as the Eagles are up 17 to three with a two touchdown lead. Next week, we'll start the playoffs for this 2020 season. 
shortened season. That six regular season games were only played this year with all teams advancing to the playoffs. The Bengals will get a bye, as my partner explained earlier in the broadcast. And we will await the winner of was it Willoughby South, Mike? The, the winner of Willoughby South versus Madison. And yes. Madison, yes. So we have enough time to prepare. Yarbrough will have a game underneath his belt. And hopefully that will bode well for him moving forward through the playoff season. But I tell you, Mike, playoff football is totally different from regular season. Oh, definitely. But if any game was to prepare Yarborough for the playoffs, it would be St. Edward. Yes, I agree. I agree. The intensity, the talent, the adjustments that have to be made. Uh, it looks like Jackson's in the backfield, eight minutes to go. Gives it to Jackson. Jackson finds a little bit of a crease, and he picks up about four yards. So Dwayne Jackson continuing to hammer in that interior line. And that's not a bad pickup. No, not at all. Dwayne Jackson has been making a lot happen with these short gains, moving the sticks often, giving us a nice third and six situation here, banging on St. Edward Eagles' door. You got to you gotta thank Hamrick and Bosco and Beltowski, McConnell. You got to thank all those guys. And he pitches it, and Jackson's got a hole. He got a crease, good job. Excellent play call, a little switch up right there with a true option. And Yarbrough delivering the ball right on time to Jackson. That he's, he comes off the field like he's got a hit right on his wrist or his hand. I'm sure it's just maybe a bruise. So the Bengals line up once again, Yarbrough under center and puts Merrill in motion. Rogers with the ball, finds a hole. Looks like he's gonna be close to a first down as Jackson is being looked at on the field and he's down on his back in pain. So I think he's gonna be okay, folks. He just needs a little time. 6.30 left to go in the third quarter. Yarbrough in the pistol. Rodgers shifts to the left. Single receiver at the bottom. He goes to the single receiver side. And the receiver didn't turn his head or anything. And it looked like it should have been a foul on that play. Yarbrough's got to get the ball up and over, though, Mike. I agree, but I'm definitely surprised at the lack of the flag there. Defense playing very tight pushing Terrell Greer to the outside. You know, I, I thought that was definitely a missed penalty. Well, landing, landing him on that again to go for the quarterback sneak, and it looks like looks like we got it. Uh, no, no, folks, looks like he's going to be short. We're going to give him a, we're going to have to give him a, put him on a diet with a little bit more oatmeal, folks. Eat some steaks and some baked potatoes. Give him a little bit more weight so he can push forward. So, so they bring the big guys in. Go with a quick snap and just run again. This time, Yarbrough under center. And it looks like it's going to be a legal procedure against the Bengals. So the wide receiver move. It looks like, who's that, Gales out there? Number one. I believe it was number one, Gales, on that, who did that. And yeah, he's coming out, so yeah, I'm pretty sure he was the culprit. So he'll be replaced by number 82, Brandon Boyd. Well, Gales will have time to think about that. Holland comes out, Lot will replace him. And we're looking at fourth down and six. Yarborough. Trying to get the ball, intercepted, tipped and intercepted. 21, got the football, and he's brought it down. Fumble, Bengals got it back. Did the Bengals get it back? 
There's a scramble as number 21. I believe that's his second interception of the night for the Eagles. Nope, we didn't get it back. St. Ed's will retain the football. It's a good job there by the defense getting the ball, getting a hand on the football, Mike, and coming up with that interception. I agree. Slightly poorly placed ball by C.J. Yarbrough, and the ball gets tipped into the air and picked off by, I believe it was number 21 for the St. Edward Eagles. But, yes, that was a good play and a good return. But Dantes Howard Jr. on the interception. Ramos gives it to Watkins, and he's up the field for a game of about one and a half, maybe two. So it'll be second down and nine, I believe. Gales. Back into the ball game on defense. Gary Merrill with the tackle. Second down and nine. 440 and counting in the third quarter. Watkins again. He bounces outside. Nobody there. He's a free runner. He's down to the 20-yard line. Fine job by that St. Edwards line as they just mow down the Bengals defense. I believe that is a sign of fatigue, Mike. Definitely. It looks like the Bengals are falling apart, especially on that outside run, which has been a problem for the Bengals to contain for the past four weeks. And they need to make some adjustments here. Ramos in the backfield with, with Watkins. Watkins breaking tackle, just knifing through the middle of that line and picks up the first down. So if he puts the ball on the 10, it'll be first and goal, but it's nope, it's on the 11-yard line. So they'll have a chance to get a, another first down before the end zone, but let's hope the Bengals defense can come up with a big play. We need a turnover right here. Ramos gives the Watkins right there. He saw Betting Field standing in the hole. He skips inside, picks up about three. That was a pretty slippery three right there. Gales in on the tackle. So it'll be second down and seven for a first down. All they need is one more yard and they can put it in the end zone. Ramos gets the football, fakes it, he keeps it. He's plowing down inside the five yard line down to about the three. So Ramos, following that offensive line in the middle of the field, and the Bengals defensive line has got their hands on their hips, and that's not a good sign. Not at all, and the St. Edwards Eagles are making a lot out of that fatigue that the <coughs> Bengals are clearly having right now. Ramos in the pistol, Watkins with him. He gives it to him, and it looks like he is in for the touchdown. So 14 quick points for the Eagles here in the third quarter. Increases the lead 23 to three. So Watkins adds on to the lead for the Eagles with 2.51 to go in the third quarter. Rios kick up and it's good. So again, with 2.51 to go in the third quarter, the Bengals defense pulling Yeoman's work as the offense not able to completely execute the way they want to down the field. Looks like we're on our way down to score, Mike. And then uh, the tip pass, uh, the interception, just flipped the script and gave the momentum back to the Eagles. You know, that's exactly right. It's like I was saying earlier, it, come, it feels like we keep knocking at their door, keep getting so close, but just so far away due to these turnovers and these mistakes that honestly can be easily adjusted if they just focus up. So I see Conkle on the sidelines. He looks like he's stretched out and ready to go. Uh, Jackson. Still trying to uh, find him, but I'm sure it'd be easy to spot once uh, the offense takes the field, and hopefully he'll be at, he'll be out there with them. 
So the Eagles will kick off right to left. There's Rios with a good kick. Keeps the ball in the field of play. Rodgers, looks like Rodgers on the return. He finds a big hole, and he advances over the 20-yard line, 30-yard line. We've been getting some good plays, good returns here by the Bengals. Definitely. In this game, uh, looks like it's going to be against the Bengals. I see the edge players clapping, but we'll see what the referee has to say. Personal foul against, oh. against the Eagles. So we'll take that. So I don't know what the personal file was for, but I appreciate him calling it. Definitely. We need all the help we can get right now with a 21-point deficit, three touchdown lead by the Eagles. So Yarborough and company will trot back out on the field and try to put some points on the board. We'll see what Coach Prevest has up his sleeves to get this young quarterback in rhythm to get us into the end zone. So Yarbrough flanked by Merrill and it looks like Jackson. Jackson gets the football, nowhere to go. Might have lost one. Nowhere to go right there for Jackson. So it'll be second down 11. Well, they got 10 on the scoreboard, 227 and counting in the third quarter. I believe this is a passing down, Mike. What do you think? I completely agree. I want to see a pass from Yarborough right now. So Conco takes off before the ball is snapped when all the receivers should be doing is just looking inside. Definitely. Just mistakes, mistakes, mistakes that could easily be avoided and, and adjusted if the Bengals offense would just focus up. I'm willing to think that he probably was the number one receiver on that play, Mike. Yeah, definitely. And probably anxious to make a play for this for this team that he's trying to be a leader on and put something together positive to end this season. Receiver gives him a lot of room. Ball up the middle. Not much there. Jackson on the carry, pick up of about two. So a little conservative right there in the play call on a second and long, be third and 13. As Conco flips over to the left side, uh, I believe we have Lott and Barrett here on the right. Excuse me, that's Greer with Lott on the right. Jackson in the backfield. Yarbrough drops back, he throws the football, and it's a bounce pass. Nowhere near the receiver. And that'll be bring up fourth down. So as Yarbrough tried to get it to Gales, not able to connect. And that'll do it for the Bengals on this possession. As Cora, Christian Cora, Trots out on the field with the with the punt unit. And Castleberry is back to receive the punt. Protection is a must right here. Good protection. Low kick, quick kick. Let's see if we get a Bengals bounce. And we do. A little one. And it'll be down at the 16 yard line of the Eagles where they will take over. Ramos and company will take over on their own 16-yard line. Exactly one minute left to go in this quarter. So the Bengals, in, uh, in a nutshell, just need to make more plays and be consistent with it. This defense is back out on the field again. I believe this is the third or fourth possession for the St. Edward Eagles in this quarter. I think this is at least the third, if not fourth. Our defense has been out there much too often. A ball up the middle as Ramos hands it off. Able to pick up of about three yards, maybe four. As that was number 25 on the carry, Daniel Enovich. 
Bedingfield and Merrill on the stop. 33 seconds and counting. Play clock is moving. Second down and seven. Ramos, get the ball. Gill, he's got the man. Good job there by, by number 10, Tex Cooper. And that's a great wraparound play for number 10, Tex Cooper, coming from, I believe, the left end position, coming all the way around and making that play so, on number 25. So Tex, Tex Cooper with a fine play there, a hog tie, and that will end the third quarter of the game as Benedictine still trails the Eagles of St. Edwards 24-3. to three. A special thanks to all our viewers and guests joining in on this special broadcast. Although we are restricted from having max capacity at these contests, the Benedictine community wants to thank you for being present from your homes. Our young men are continuing the rich Benedictine tradition of being developed in mind, body, and spirit as we are in, our, in year number 94. To assist these young men and provide the resources they deserve, please consider making a charitable contribution to assist with new academic programs, athletic operations, or most importantly, tuition assistance by visiting www.cbhs.net forward slash giving. That's www.cbhs.net forward slash giving. Your gift matters and will continue to change lives for current students as well as future Bengals. So Ramos takes the snap. He's, looks like he's trying to develop a screen. Bengals all over it. Good job of decipher, deciphering that play, snuffing it out, and bringing down the man as Chris Gales was on the tackle. So that bring up fourth down, and the Eagles will punt. So the Bengals will get the ball back at the top of the quarter as we need to, we need to uh, score quick and fast. So we got a good punt as the players are fighting all the way downfield. Good job there by the Bengals as the ball crosses over the 50 into their, into their territory and they'll take over on the 39 yard line of their own 39 yard line. So, the story is, the offense have not been effective tonight with a young quarterback in the backfield tonight as C.J. Yarbrough has shown signs of brilliance. He really has, but not enough consistency in order to get the Bengals into the end zone to get a touchdown. We have one Mike Sharan 34-yard field goal, and that's it. Exactly. So Yarborough will take the ball, gives it to Lott, and he is run down. No, he breaks that tackle, and he passed the ball to the 40-yard line. Well, he'll pick up a yard, maybe a yard and a half. So number seven did an excellent job of chasing him down, mm -hmm. Charles Calhoun, but he's coming up limping after that play, and he's gonna stay in the ball game. Yarbrough in the backfield with Gary Merrill, Holland. Number two at the slot, tight slot on the right. Merrill shifts to the left. He looks, throws it to Gales. Gales, fine catch. Using both hands, he grows up tall to bring the ball down. Into Sierra's territory where the ball will be placed on the, big, on the uh, Eagles 37 yard line. Nice execution, Mike. Definitely great execution. I'd like to see more of these quick fires from Yarborough to his receivers for 10 plus yards here. He didn't have to think much. The man flashed open, Yarbrough delivered. He'll take the snap again. He's looking for a man, but he is slung down by number one, Castleberry. So Castleberry in, able to grab Yarbrough and sling him to the ground. 
So an aggressive bay right there by Castleberry brings up a second on, and 13. So the Bengals wait for the snap. Yarborough in the pistol. Jackson shifts to the right. Here's a blitz. Here's the ball. And ah, I didn't know what 73 was thinking about. 73 did not block his man. If he would have blocked that man, we would have been able to make a big play out of that one. Wow. Jackson smacked right into number 73. Big big junior Joe McDonald. And that <laughs> I think that tackle really gets credited to McDonald there. <laughs> but McDonald had the man right in front of him. He needed to give Jackson a, a way to go inside or outside, but he just stood there and let the defender do the reacting while he didn't move. So to bring on third and 12, Merrill on the left side, trips to the right. Yarbrough's looking to the weak side, wide open. Oh! Oh, we had to do is play catch. That's all we had to do is play catch. Gales was wide open. And we just couldn't come up with the completion. Wow. So fourth and 12, the offense is going to stay out on the field. And I believe that was our one of our blessings for the night. And we missed it. Oh, my gosh. Hopefully we can get another one. Yarbrough's got that bad pass out of his system. Good protection. Throws a dart. Good job there by, I believe it's Lott on the catch, and Lott is able to pick the ball up and get it up to first down territory where the Bengals will advance the football with a new fresh set of downs. So Yarbrough to Lott on a 12-yard pass in the middle of the field, just what the doctor had ordered here with 8.27 left to go in the football game. The Bengals fighting, scratching, and clawing. Definitely making it seem a little harder than it should be. Cross buck action, Merrill with the ball. Stiff arms, he's on his way to the end zone. He's not gonna catch him, he's in. Touchdown, Gary Merrill. Just what the doctor ordered as the Bengals score their first touchdown of the night here in the fourth quarter at the 8.09 mark. Mike Sharan, excuse me, Ivan Sharan on for the kick. What a great run by Merrill. I believe his first of the night ending up to be a touchdown. So Merrill able to scoot into the end zone, fine blocking by the offensive line. You got to give them credit. The receivers on the outside did an excellent job of stalk blocking. Merrill takes it into the end zone. There's Ivan Sharan, snap, hold, kick, good. So the Bengals cut the deficit. Down to two touchdowns. There's still time left, folks. We need a three and out by the defense and get the ball back into this young quarterback's hand so he can work some magic so we can get up on the board as the Bengals with 809 left in the ball game are down 24 to 10. Usually when we see Merrill as a running back, we see him as a big power back, usually charging up the middle. But I like coach, uh, offensive coordinator Joe Prevest's decision to let Merrill go to the outside and really use his legs to churn out those extra yards and get that touchdown with speed rather than force. Excellent, excellent job, excellent job. Well, folks, I'm going to bring you a fun fact tonight. A living legend is in the stands, and not even the COVID-19 can stop him. Record-setting streak for most consecutive games attended by a fan continues tonight as Benedictine grad Frank Haynes of 73 entered the 2019 season with 434 consecutive games attended. Wow. His streak goes on and extended into the 2020 season, and he hasn't missed a game yet this year. Oh His gosh. streak began when the Bengals defeated West Tech 48 to nothing on September 5, 1981. And the, st the streak is still alive. He, su he surpassed Father Theodore Gerard, 
who had 324 games from 73 to 2003. Oh, yeah. Onside kick. And the Bengals come up with the ball. Here we go, folks. Here we go. Great execution by the special teams. Good job, Ivan Sharan. Make sure that ball stayed on the ground. And who's that running off the ball, ground, off the field with the ball? That looks like number 19, four of the Bengals, Darius Barrett. What a great place kick by kicker Yvonne Sharan right over the 50 yard line and taken down by Barrett. Just an awesome play for the Bengals to try and turn the tides here and possibly cut this lead down to only one touchdown, hopefully to try and make it 17 to 24 and make this fourth quarter a little easier to handle for the Bengals. So now the Bengals are on the prowl. They will get the football in their own territory. Yarbrough, flanked by a receiver. And what do we have here? It looks like, did we get the timeout in time? Yes, we did. So the Bengals had to burn a timeout that we possibly could use in the future. It looked like the coaches had the personnel package a little m mixed up as it looked like, what was that, number 81? Was that Greer that was running off the field? 81 is Greer. Mm -hmm. I don't like the idea of burning two timeouts so early in the, in the second half with only one timeout that we have left and a whopping eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter that may or may not hurt us in the future. Yeah, the future is not far away, Mike, because there is, like you said, 808 left to go in the football game. So we're hoping that the Bengals can get a good set of plays here, advance the ball, pick up another seven points. Yarbrough hands it off. Looks like that might be Floyd. I mean, excuse me, Rogers. So Rogers gets the ball, advances it. He pick up about two. Second down and eight. Clock is ticking. We're under eight minutes to go. Bengals line up. Nope. They're going to look over to the sideline. Rodgers and Merrill in the backfield. He's going to pick up the blitz. Back scoot up. They pick up the blitz. Throw. He's going to try to throw him open. And the offense had to play defense again. Ball not quite long enough as he tried to give it to Marvin. And Conco will come off the field. He is, he's limping pretty bad, Mike. He is limping really bad. And he'll come off the field, of course, hopefully to get stretched out some more. His left calf has been bothering him the entire night. Twenty seconds left to go on the play clock as Greer Comes over to get the signal from the coach. It's got to be a personnel, personnel change. Bengals got plenty of time to get the ball off. Five seconds, a lot in motion. Snap, Yarbrough, and Gales. Oh, Gales dropped another one. Excuse me. Gales dropped the ball, not another one. He doesn't have any drops tonight, but he dropped the ball. It was pretty tall, though, Mike. It was, it was up there in the air. That was a really high ball, and that's definitely a, re a result of him getting blitzed so hard up the middle very quickly. That offensive line has got to do a better job of stopping them right up the middle because CJ did not even really have a chance to look at the receiver before he had to throw that ball. Well, it looked like we had the right play called, uh, like a, in, uh, uh, a slip screen inside. We were supposed to throw it quick. He just couldn't get it on the money to Gales. They're blitzing again, trying to blitz this young quarterback. There he goes, he gets around. Okay, and he's got out of bounds. Looks like he's got the first down. He had to get across the 40 and they're gonna mark him. They're not gonna give him, they're not gonna give him the 40 yard line. Looks like he's on the 39. And the Eagles will, will take over the football. So the defense to trot back out on the field. That was a fourth down and 12. And I don't know if he didn't know where the, where the first down was because the yard markers 
Mike was on the other side of the field, I believe if he was been able to see him, he would have put his head down and dove and tried to get that first down. I agree. That's an incredibly difficult play to make, especially when your first option was, of course, to pass, and he had to go to a sec second option to run to the outside, and he couldn't quite get the first down on that one. So Ramos hands it off to, that's 25 right there. That will be Inovich. So Inovich picks up about four. He's second down and six. Ball on the on the Eagles 46 yard line. 645 and counting left to go in the ball game. Everybody's going to the left and they able to bring him down right there. One of the big linemen holding on. Able to bring him down. Looks like it's gonna be Oh, that's number two. That's Holland. So Holland picks up another tackle. As Inovich again on that run, and they're gonna try. They're gonna try to pound him the rest of the game. I believe, Mike. Definitely. And why wouldn't they? He's making a ton of plays for them right now. Third and one, with only six minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. So, so again, third and one. Ramos. Gives the signal, hands it off right up the middle, and he bounces to the outside, able to pick up even more yards down to the 36-yard line of the Bengals. So Inovich again, and there's a Bengal with and then Payne on the field right there near the logo for Euclid High School Stadium. So 52 comes in. Deshaun Laster will come in and replace him. As I don't know who that is on the ground right now, but as soon as we get a number and a name, folks, we'll get it to you. Oh, it's Womack. That's well, Womack, and he's been tender on an ankle all season. So I hope it's not the same ankle. Okay, he's able to get up, but he's going to walk off gingerly. So the big fella will make his way to the sideline as gingerly as possible. As the Bengals defense regroups, it's just too easy on that last play, Mike, to pick up the first down and advance the ball even further downfield. Much too easy. The Bengals' run defense was looking very strong to start the half and even last half, honestly. But they are definitely breaking down as a result of most likely fatigue here late in the fourth. So Ramos in the backfield. Look like it's a different running back back there right now. That's Malachi at the running back. He gets the football. And he's wrestled down by there. There right there is as looks like that was Holland on the tackle again. Tex Cooper there with an assist. Clock ticking, 5.28. And County. Bing goes down two scores, 24 to 10. The Eagles in Bengal territory. Ramos at the quarterback. Watkins shifts to the left. Turns. He didn't give it to him. Wide open is that left side. And there's Ramos, stays in bounds and sits down right at the first down marker. So he'll get the first down. As he sits down, keeps the clock running, and advances the sticks. So a great read right there by Ramos as he rode Watkins into the line when that defensive end crashed down. There was nothing but green over here, over there for him, Mike, to pick up the first down. Definitely. This quarterback, this quarterback has done a great job looking off his receivers and looking off his running back and keeping the ball for himself to make a lot of positive yards, getting tons of first downs for the St. Edward Eagles. Ramos in the pistol, turns, gives it off, right there up the middle with that Inovich again. And Inovich fights and slashes, grits and grinds his way down inside the 20 yard line. And the Eagles are now in the red zone. 
So it'll be second down and about three. Looks like more, looks more like four to me. Three fifty four left to go in the game. And to the to the left to the right, excuse me. He gets the ball, goes back to the left. And he finds a hole and advance the ball upfield again to about the eleven yard line. But they will put in a new fresh set of downs. This is first and ten. The defensive line is definitely tired, Mike, and it looks like this offensive line of the St. Edward Eagles are leaning on them and taking all the strength out of them. I agree. It looks like the St. Edward Eagles may just be more conditioned here, but that could also be a cause of the fact that our defense has been on the field for so long, and this offensive line has been dropping back a lot to allow their quarterback to make plays on his own. Yep, this is the second game in a row that the defense has toiled so hard as Watkins comes up through the middle of that right side of the line. Pick up of about three. Look like Gary Merrill on the tackle along by with Gabris assisting. So the ball's on the six yard line. The the game out of hand for the Bengals. We could get a good big a big play right here by the defense in order to slow him down and stop him. Ramos hands it off to Watkins. Watkins barrels his way in the end zone, standing up, and he's in. So the Eagles continue to pour it on. They didn't throw the ball on that drive at all. As Watkins able to put the ball in the end zone. To increase the deficit, another six points, 30 to 10. And Watkins has been running all over our defense tonight. Rios kick up and good. As he has been perfect for today, as the Eagles increase the lead by 21 to 31 to 10. So folks, football season in Northeast Ohio means it's also admission season. If you want to be a man of Benedictine or know someone who belongs at the home of champions, register today for your private tour. Our next open house is October 7th. I believe that's uh, next week, right, Mike? Definitely next week. It is the second today, so that's in only five days. So, so we hope to see you there, you, you, you new uh, Bengals. Learn more or save, us, save your spot at cbhs.edu forward slash admissions. That's cbhs.edu forward slash admissions. Hope to see you there. Those uh, open houses are full of information, and it's, and it's a good time to meet the faculty, some faculty members, the administrators of the school, and take a, a walk around the storied halls of uh, Benedictine. There's a kick. Rodgers with the ball. 21 with the tackle. That would be Dantes Howard Jr. Flag is down on the play. Oh, so we'll see what the referees come up with. Yep, and it is holding on the Bengals. So that'll push us back a little further. So that'll negate some of Rogers' run. And the Bengals will start inside their 15-yard line. Or nope, exactly on the 15-yard line. So Yarborough, in his first start of his young career, didn't go exactly as he planned. He's done some good things. And there's definitely room to grow. Yarborough's in the pistol. Barks out the instructions as given to him from the sideline. Rogers in the backfield. Rogers shifts to the right. Yarbrough with the ball. He rolls right. He's got blocking up front. And he throws it, and it's out of bounds. 
Good job. So that's a good sign. If you don't have anything, throw it out of bounds. Live to play another down, Mike. And uh, hopefully we have a better result. Very mature decision by junior quarterback <coughs> C.J. Yarborough. You can see as the game goes on, he's feeling a little more confident in that backfield for the Bengals, making passes left and right, and throwing the ball out of bounds once in a while. You know, we haven't seen Jackson since he went out what looked like an arm injury or a wrist injury. Uh, we hope he's okay. No word from the sideline. Oh, excuse me, Jackson's in the game now. So he's okay. That's a good sign. Yarbrough fakes to the right, turns left. He's got a man, make a man miss. Picks up a first down, almost. Almost. So 51 and 27 for the Eagles, run him out of bounds. And he's able to pick up about seven yards. Third down and two. Third and two, 140 and counting left to go in the football game. And I like what Yarborough's seeing right now. When he sees that he doesn't have the receivers open, he makes good plays up the side. And honestly gets a lot of positive yards for the Bengals just with his legs. That's taking a, a page out of the Ronnie Schultz book right there, I tell you. <laughs> Yarbrough turns, gives to Jackson. Jackson with a big hold. He slashes left, comes back to the middle, and he's down. Brought down right there after he picks up a first down. 114. The clock stops as they move the chains. Rodgers will come off the field. Excuse me. Yes, Rodgers will come off the field. Merrill will be in the backfield. Merrill's last regular season game as a Bengal. Shifts over to the right. Yarbrough gets the ball. Looks, throws it out to Greer. Greer made a man miss and carried about three Eagles up to the 35, um, excuse me, the 45 yard line. Wow. Bengals in hurry up mode, 48 seconds to go in the ball game. And that was a good move by Terrell Greer. A little too late to make too much of a difference to the score, but some showing some brilliance from Junior here. This gives us more confidence, more weapons, Mike, for the playoffs. Definitely. Yarborough barking it out, under 30 seconds to go. Play clock at 21. Running back shifts. Massimero, he throws it. Greer gets it again, cuts to the inside of the field. He's going all the way, trying to get all the way across, but he's brought down by number 28 right there for the Eagles. And that will be Hayden Rice as Rice gets the tackle. Bengals, looks like they're going to clock it, and they do. So 12 seconds left to go in the football game. Yarborough looking for the signal for the next play. They get it from the booth, cascade it down. Two coaches giving signals so you don't know which one is the real one. And it's, they got players running on and off the field. Oh, Yarbrough pass incomplete. Looks like he was going for Greer again. And not unable to connect as also on that side was, was Barrett. So we have we have a, a new set of receivers in there, guys who play, uh, but not every down, trying to make an impact on this game before it's over. Eight seconds to go. Screen. Rodgers made two men miss. Wow. Good job by Rodgers. As he goes out of bounds with no time left, and that'll be all for tonight's game. So, Bengal Nation, not like we wanted it to be, but we did see some signs, some flashes of brilliance by our, our young quarterback who's going to have to carry us through the second season, which is the playoff season. Everybody makes it, and we will be facing the winner of the Willoughby South Madison game in two weeks. So we 
We'll let you know. Check the website. Check the Facebook page to see exactly where the game is going to be because there is a conflict of scheduling with Euclid High School. The home team here at this field also scheduled to play in the playoffs. So for Mike Kenny, well, Mike, let me ask you, you have any comments you want to wrap it up for us? The only thing I can really say is I'm pretty impressed with the lack of penalties the Bengals had tonight in regard to their most recent games. Not too many penalties, but definitely a lot of mistakes that need to be cleared up in the following weeks. Yep, I agree. And I think that extra week of preparation is going to help us. Oh, for sure. I think we can get a lot of mental reps in. We can talk about, you know, uh, the young quarterback, how we can help him, and also decipher our opponent next week uh, between Willoughby South and uh, Madison and come up with an excellent game plan with uh, Coach Good and his, uh, and his coaching staff to advance that week and then catch fire and hopefully have a, a successful second season. Definitely. So from the chilly shores of Cleveland, Ohio, actually Euclid, Ohio, here at the Euclid High School Football Stadium, the regular season is over, folks, and now it's playoff time. Please join us as we bring you playoff action. Please check the school's website, check our Facebook for the link, and hopefully we'll be back with you in two weeks. So for my partner, Michael Kenny. I'm John Good. Thank you for joining us. Have a good night, and please, please stay safe. Good night.